Anti-mimesis is a philosophical position that holds the direct opposite of Aristotelian mimesis. In the essay, written as a platonic dialogue, Wilde holds that anti-mimesis results not merely from life's imitative instinct, but from the fact that the self-conscious aim of life is to find expression, and that art offers it certain beautiful forms through which it may realize that energy. What is found in life and nature is not what is really there, but is that which artists have taught people to find there, through art. As in an example posited by Wilde, although there has been fog in London for centuries, one notices the beauty and wonder of the fog because, poets and painters have taught the loveliness of such effects, they did not exist till art had invented them. McGraw places the anti-mimetic philosophy in a tradition of Irish writing, including Wilde and writers such as St. John Joyce in a group that elevate Blarney to aesthetic and philosophical distinction, noting that Terry Eagleton observes an even longer tradition that stretches as far back in Irish thought as the 9th century theology of John, Scotus Eriogena, and the fantastic hyperbole of the ancient sagas. Wilde's anti-mimetic idealism, specifically, McGrath describes to be part of the late 19th century debate between Romanticism and Realism. Wilde's anti-mimetic philosophy has also had influence on later Irish writers, including Brian Friel. Halliwell asserts that the notion that life imitates art derives from classical notions that can be traced as far back as the writings of Aristophanes of Byzantium, and does not negate mimesis but rather displace s its purpose onto the art-like fashioning of life itself. Halliwell draws a parallel between Wilde's philosophy and Aristophanes' famous question about the comedies written by Menander, O oh Menander and Life. Which of you took the other as your model? Noting, however, that Aristophanes was a precursor to Wilde, and not necessarily espousing the positions that Wilde was later to propound. In George Bernard Shaw's preface to three plays he wrote, I have noticed that when a certain type of feature appears in painting and is admired as beautiful, it presently becomes common in nature, so that the Beatrices and Francescas in the picture galleries of one generation come to life as the parlour maids and waitresses of the next. He stated that he created the aristocratic characters in Cashel Byron's profession as unrealistically priggish even without his later understanding that the real world does not exist. Men and women are made by their own fancies in the image of the imaginary creatures in my youthful fictions. Only much stupider, Shaw, however, disagreed with Wilde on some points. He considered most attempts by life to imitate art to be reprehensible, in part because the art that people generally chose to imitate was idealistic and romanticized.